Hi, I'm Jessica Marksbury for Golf.com, and I'm delighted to share a round with brand new tour winner, Tony Fee now this month. Tony, cheers to you. Cheers, thank and you. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Now, I love to ask about the beverage that we're sharing. Yeah. Today's choice is root beer. Well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not an alcohol drinker, so this is kind of the, uh, uh, I guess, the secondary to alcohol. Instead of the real beer, I just go with root beer. So, uh, no, it's, it's a family drink. My parents really loved it growing up, and, uh, and they've kind of passed it on to us. And, and I enjoy a root beer every now and again, not too much. I don't think my, uh, my trainer would approve, but uh, every now and again, I, I really enjoy just drinking a little root beer. Well, obviously, something's working really well for you. You're a brand new tour winner, as I mentioned. Yeah. Puerto Rico Open in a playoff. Take us back there, right? You you had a putt to win on the 18th hole. It's yeah. about a six footer. Yep. Missed it. I would think a lot of guys would crumble at that point and their confidence would be shattered, but you went out and had three birdies in a row in the playoff to beat Steve Marino for your first win. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was a great way to, I think, to, to cap my first win on the PGA Tour. Um, you know, I, I hit that putt and I joke quite a bit with my caddy and a lot of people that asked. When I, when I hit that putt on the 72nd hole to, uh, I had an opportunity to win, and when it slid past the hole, uh, I gave it a little extra stare, uh, a little longer, because I, I told myself, I don't remember missing that putt when I was a kid, <laughs> but I think I had a lot more opportunities to make it, so I guess third time's a charm uh, on the third playoff hole and get my first victory. Let's talk a bit about your story, because it, it is such an incredible story of, of where you started growing up, turned nice. pro at 17 years old, had a chance uh, to be a scholarship player in not only golf, but also basketball at a number yeah. of Division I programs. And yet, uh, you know, turning pro at 17, going for the, the big money event and, and actually cashing a, a pretty sizable check and starting your professional career from there. Yeah, exactly, it was crazy. You know, at the time I look back now, uh, 17 years old is really young, you know, to, to be able to take on the task that I am trying to now at 26 years old. So, you know, at the time I felt like it was the right choice. And now looking back, uh, I believe it was. You know, I think I wouldn't change any of the experiences that I've had, uh, you know, because I don't know that I'd be the player or the person that I am today without the experiences that I've been through uh, mm -hmm. at that time. But uh, it was a family decision at the time. You know, my parents had a lot to do with it, and uh, as well as my siblings. You know, we felt like in the financial state that we were in uh, moving forward. This could be a huge uh, asset to our family moving forward financially. And, uh, and so that was the, the route that we decided to take. You also have some really incredible role models in your extended family. You have professional yeah. athletes yeah, in the NFL, cool. in the NBA, including Jabari Parker. Yeah. Now tell me, is, this, is there some one-upsmanship going on at family <laughs> reunions at this point now that you also are a PGA Tour winner? <laughs> well, we're definitely very competitive. You know, I don't think we'd be in our respective uh, situations if we weren't competitive people. So I think we could joke around about uh, things like that. But I think ultimately, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to be uh, just, you know, doing what I am for my family. And, and I know that they are too. I have a lot of respect for Jabari and Haloti Nada and, and a lot of good, uh, great athletes that come out of our family. So it's really cool just to be a part of. Um, as far as one-upping, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I know Haloti has, has a Super Bowl ring and, and now I have a PGA, uh, PGA Tour win. So I'll take the one-up I have on him right now. You said last year something that really helped you, or at least over the last several years, was changing your putting grip. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that's made an impact on your game? Yeah, in 2013 I changed to left hand low, or cross handed, and it's helped a lot. You know, at the time, the reason I, I, I switched was uh, just a, a lot of inconsistency I felt like with putting. I was either making a lot of putts or I was missing a lot of putts, and I was just looking for consistency. And so I decided to change my grip, and I went to cross hand, and I know a lot of great players have. So I, I tried it and, and it's been a huge asset. It was the same year in 2013, I got through qualifying school. And, uh, and so I never looked back from there. You know, I, obviously you're gonna have some, some weeks where you putt good and, and some where you, you don't putt as well, but um, it's something that I stuck with and, and I'm happy that I have. I think mm -hmm. I've had a lot of success on the greens because of it. You're known for your prodigious length off the tee. Can you give us a tip that some of our viewers at home who were just <laughs> looking to maybe squeeze a few extra yards out of their driver, is there anything that we can do without being born with your natural talent? <laughs> I was just going to say, maybe get a little bit bigger. I don't know. <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> grow, get some, grow, some, grow some longer arms. No, uh, you know, in, in all reality, you know, this distance comes from uh, how fast you can swing a club and if you can hit it in the center of the face. You know, I think hitting it solid and, and hitting it, you know, not only swinging fast, but hitting it solid are kind of those two, uh, two things combined. You know, there's no real secret to it. 
if if I could swing, you know, 135 miles an hour and hit in the center of the face, it's going to go pretty far. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think a lot of the best players in the world are starting to trend in that direction where they're starting to hit it with some distance. So uh, I'm happy that I have the length that I've had. I've been blessed to uh, have the body that I have to be able to uh, produce the speed that I do. Really, uh, I feel effortless, effortlessly. So um, it, it's pretty it's pretty cool. You are pretty much a part of this great youth movement that we're seeing on the PGA Tour at this point, and especially just noticing your ensemble today. And this is actually golf apparel that yeah. you're wearing right yeah. now. Like Nike has really been pushing the envelope and it, it looks great Thank and you. it's really appealing to a younger demographic. What do you what do you think about um, the ways that, that Nike is trying to grow the game through apparel? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, modern athlete is kind of their uh, Nike's motto and I'm happy to be uh, a Nike, you know, a Nike member and, and a Nike Nike athlete, I think I fit the bill. In order for the game to continue to grow and progress, um, I think we've got to touch uh, a little bit of a different uh, demographic, if you will, myself included. You know, grew up a little bit in poverty and things, but the ti Tiger changed that. You know, he made it look cool, and uh, and I think a lot of us younger guys are starting to do that to, to the younger generation. Uh, maybe you know, dressing a little bit different, and uh, you know, we might turn some some of the older guys' heads. But <laughs> I think overall, it's going to be it's it's only for the good of the game. I think the biggest part of, uh, of being a PGA Tour player is we you know we're role models and and ambassadors of the game. Just doing your part to continue to grow the game in the way that you can. Uh, is is important and, and that's that's really how I do it mm -hmm. you know how I hit the ball and things but you know this is me this is how I dress and and this you know this is how I enjoy playing the game of golf. Well I know also you're one of the few guys probably a very select few guys on tour who can actually dunk a basketball. Is there <laughs> anyone any fellow player that can hang with you on the basketball court? <laughs> you know I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to say there's no one that, that I can't. You know, there's a lot of great athletes on the PGA Tour and a lot of good basketball players. Um, but I, you know, I think I can definitely put my name in the mix as, as one of the best. And uh, I just, I love playing basketball. You know, I still enjoy playing pickup. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know that my manager approves too much, but um, I enjoy playing a lot of pickup uh, basketball still. And, and yeah, it's still cool to be able to dunk a basketball. I think, uh, you know, I think it's a bucket list item for a lot of people. So I'm happy that I've been able to do that. And again, you know, I, I'm pretty tall and and pretty long, so you know, my body's probably built to, to play basketball more than golf, but uh, I, just, I just enjoy that sport. You know, probably uh, second to golf is, is basketball for me. Are there enough guys on a week-to-week -week basis if you wanted to get a quick pickup game <laughs> out on tour? Can, yeah. you, can you find them? Are yeah, I think there is for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, I haven't done it yet, but I know, I know a lot of guys that play, and a lot of guys that have, that have asked me if, I, if I'd be willing to play a pickup game as well. So um, I think one of these days we'll have, to, we'll have to take them up on it. Well, you'll definitely have to Snapchat. Just <laughs> promise us that. That Perfect. social media uh, action would be phenomenal. Done. Phenomenal, actually. Oh, I like it. Tony, <laughs> thank you so much. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Thank Great you. to have around with you today. Yeah, I appreciate it.